Hey Kevin here from DIYDork.com. Today I want to show you how to make a really simple magnetic knife rack using reclaimed pallet wood. Now this is a really simple project and it works great and it looks awesome. So check it out. I think you're going to like it. Alrighty, so if you've seen some of my other videos recently, you know I've been working with a lot of pallet wood and I had a bunch of these little pieces left over and I was trying to figure out an idea a way I could reuse them and uh, recently I found a tutorial I think it was an instructables tutorial and they were showing how to make a magnetic knife rack with pallet wood so I thought I'd try it out myself and experiment with it a little bit and see if I could figure out the most efficient way and cheapest way to make this so I just have a little piece of pallet wood here Leftover um, length doesn't really matter just as long as it's big enough to fit all your knives. Thickness kind of does matter. Um, this one is a little thin. It's about a half inch thick. And most pallet woods usually thicker. It's probably three quarter inch thick. Maybe even like five eighths. would probably work better. I would not go any thinner than a half inch. And of course you don't have to use pallet wood. That's just what I had. And the idea is that the knives will be able to hang from it like this. Alright, so there'll be magnets embedded on the back side of this wood so you'll never see it and this will stick right to it and then it can hang up on a wall with a couple of screws and uh, hold them up. So let me show you a couple of things I figured out with this. Okay, so the first thing I want to show you is the magnets I'm using. Now I found at Hobby Lobby a 50 pack of just regular ceramic magnets just like the kinds you'd use on a you know refrigerator magnet. These are three quarter inch and you got a 50 pack for $7.99, so $8 is able to get 50 of these. All right, now I also found one inch magnets, same thing, ceramic magnets. It was only a six pack, so I actually bought two packs. They were $2.49 each, so for $5, you would get 12 one inch magnets, or for um, $8, you could get 50 three quarters. So the most affordable way is to go with the three quarter. Now, the difference is that these are not quite as strong as the one inch, so you'd have to use more three quarter to get the same holding power as the one inch. But it probably would still be a lot more expensive to use just one inch, especially if you're only getting six for 250, than to get 50 of these for eight bucks. But just kind of depends. If you have really heavy duty knives, you know, really good sturdy heavy ones, you probably want thicker, heavier magnets, or just use a lot more of these. So let me show you one more thing I did with the magnets before I start messing with the wood. All right, so the first thing I did with my magnets is I just took them out of the pack and I grabbed a Sharpie and I marked one side of them. And to figure out what side, I just took all of them and I found out which way they attract each other. So I did it on the one inch and the three quarter. And I went through and I just added a little dot on that. So see, there's not a dot on this, this side. It's just one side has a dot. I did it to all of them. And that way, when we go to put them in the wood, we know what direction they're facing because you actually can alternate them. It seems to hold a little better. It's a little easier to work with if you're, you know, which side they're facing. So just do that real quick, and then uh, we can start actually messing with the wood. All right, now the basic idea of this pallet wood magnetic rack is that you'll flip it over, and we're going to drill a bunch of holes in here so that our magnets can drop in there. Now another thing that I'm doing is I'm doubling up the magnets. I'm using two per magnet because whenever you layer magnets, they get stronger. They hold a little better. So I'll be using them in doubles. And that's also another reason to have the dots, you know, which way they attract. All right, so flip it over and then uh, we'll be able to drill holes. And we're gonna drill holes with Forstner bits. Now, if you've never seen one of these before, they just have a little tiny spike right there in the center and that helps it, you know, position where you want and stay in place so don't wander all over the place. And it drills a really clean hole. Now the Forstner bits are a little bit pricey, so one thing you want to do that I discovered is when you get your magnets, you should measure them before you go out and buy your bits. Now my one inch bits fit the uh, one inch uh, Forstner drill bit hole just fine, but for some reason, maybe it's just my batch of magnets, but for whatever reason, my three quarter inch magnets are a little bit big. So whenever I went and got my three quarter inch bit and was practicing drilling some holes, these didn't fit. So I had to actually upsize to a 7 8 So I recommend when you go get your magnets to go ahead, take a tape measure and just measure them real quick. Make sure that they are exactly three quarter or even just a smidge smaller. Otherwise, your hole is not gonna be big enough. Okay, now the reason I think that my half inch piece of board here 
is on the absolute minimum you can go is because when you line up the Forstner bit to it, you can see how that spike can go right through it. It'll go down too far. And it actually happened to mine. I don't know if you can tell, but there's a couple of spots here when I was test drilling where I went a little too far because I was testing out some patterns that I'll show you here in just a minute. So you can see like, you can see the little hole in there. So I went just a little bit too far. But uh, what you got to do is basically, kind of like I did, just get a test board just to get a feel for um, how far your bit needs to go in. And you'll notice that whenever you get it just right, um, you know, there's going to be a certain amount that sticks out. Now on mine, because the bit is basically as thick as the board, the actual cutting surface will stick out a little bit, about a sixteenth of an inch or so. So I know when I'm drilling in, as soon as I get that far, I should stop or otherwise it's going to poke out. All right, but if your board's a little thicker, it's three quarter inch, you know, it, it'll be covered up and it might come up to about here. And what you can do is hold it to the side like this and you could wrap it with a piece of tape so that it's, it's flush with the top of the board. It would, you know, imagine it was like that and you could add a piece of tape right there, knowing that once you drill, that's as far as you want to go or it's going to go too far. So next I'll show you a couple of drill patterns and how they hold and uh, different sizes, different amounts for uh, however big your knives are. All right, so real quick, I'll just show you how my uh, magnets fit in the holes. This little one right here is my three-quarter inch hole. And as you can see, for whatever reason, my magnets are just a little bit too big. They don't fit. So I had to upsize to a 7 8 So you can see here, they drop in. There's just a little bit of gap, but that's not bad. I mean, once they're glued in, you won't be able to tell. And then my one-inch magnets here, here's a one-inch hole. Those fit perfect. So... Hopefully your magnets will fit better. Mine just didn't, so I had to upsize a little bit. So that's why I said to go ahead and buy your magnets first and then measure them to see exactly what size they are before you get your Forstner bits. Because these are a little bit pricey. This uh, one inch bit is probably about $9, $10. And then uh, the three quarter here is probably about five or six. And then the seven eighths is somewhere in between, probably about seven or eight dollars. So they're a little pricey, but you'll be able to use them for a lot of projects and they're actually really handy to make really clean holes. All right, so now I'll show you how well that the different patterns actually hold the knives. So now I'll show you how to actually drill it and finish it out to make it into the knife rack. It's really simple, a little bit messy, but I'll show you what to expect. All right, so the very first thing I did was I grabbed my board and I just flipped it upside down. So I just took it like this. I flipped it around like that. So it was, you know, this back side here where I'm going to drill is showing. And then I laid out my knives in the order that I want them to go. And then I just took my little carpenter square here and a pencil. And it may be hard to see, but I drew a center line underneath all of these so I can center up my magnets. Okay. Now also, I went ahead and it might be hard to see as well but I made a cross mark on all these so I know exactly where center is so that I can evenly space all of my little magnets, okay? Now, because I'm using the bigger knife here and a slightly bigger one here, and then my others are all smaller, I decided on these three smaller ones here, I guess it would be like that. I'm just gonna go really simple with three three-quarter inch holes, so it'd be one there, one there, one there. And then right here, I decided to go ahead and go with the six, three quarter inch. So that way I have a small knife now, but if I ever get a big knife, another big knife, I could put it there. All right. And then where my yellow one's going to go, I decided to go with the four one inch magnets. So I'll have that there, this pattern here, and then these three will just be the single line of three holes. So I'll show that to you next. It's really simple. You just got to be a little careful to not go all the way through and it creates a huge mess. So I'll show that to you next. Okay, so the first holes I'm going to drill are the one inch holes from a big yellow knife. Remember, it was like a cross pattern with four of the one inch magnet sets in there. So what I'm doing is when I lay my bit down, um, I don't want the edge of the bit to touch my center line. I want it to be just off a little bit, maybe a sixteenth of an inch to an eighth of an inch. And then I can press it down and then that little spike on my bit can make a nice little starter hole so I know exactly where to uh, start drilling. I'll do the same thing on the other side, all right? When I lay it down, I want just a little bit of gap between the edge of the bit and that line so that when both of these holes are drilled, there's just a little bit of wood in between. 
once those are both drilled, I'll do the top and the bottom. It'll be the same thing. There'll be just a little bit of wood in between, uh, you know, these two holes, and then a little bit of wood in between these two holes. It'll be the same thing. Seems like the closer the magnets are to each other, the stronger they all kind of work together. And then uh, once I get over here, I can do the same thing with these six. I'll drill the centers where there's just a little bit of gap in between here. And I'll do the same thing on that pair and that pair. And up here to be very similar, I'll just center it right on my cross mark, the very first one. And then I can just put a little bit of gap in between the top and the bottom ones. So now let me try to drill. It's a little messy, but uh, it's not too bad. All right, so I got my drill bit in the drill. I got that little center point into my starter hole. And I'm going to start drilling, and I'm not going to go too hard. I'm not going to press too hard because it might go a little too deep. And I'll drill a little bit, and then I'll pull it out. I'll check. I'll flip around, make sure I haven't poked through. And I'll just keep doing that until I get down to where I want to go. And if you remember earlier, I said that uh, my drill bit will poke out of the hole just a little bit. So I might be at that point already. I think I might go just a little more, but I will double check, make sure it has not poked through, and no it hasn't. So I need to go just a little bit more, but I got to be careful now. And same thing, just keep checking and oh, I see that I just barely went through, so um, it shouldn't show, but I'll have to be more careful with the next hole. So let me go over here now. there but I think it needs to go just a little bit more again be very careful okay all right I think that one's good as well so I'll do the other two and I'll show you what these look like all finished up okay so I have all four holes drilled I just dropped in my magnets real quick to make sure they're not sticking out too far because remember my board's a little too thin but it'll work and I'll test it real quick. So throw up that knife, holds nice and strong, so that should work out perfect. So I'll go ahead and I will finish drilling out the rest of my holes. And then I will show you how to finish the wood so it's nice and smooth and has a, you know, a nice little clear coat on there. And then uh, I'll show you how to glue in the magnets so they don't pop out on you later as well. All right, so here is all the holes drilled out. Made a ginormous mess, so you want to make sure to do this somewhere where you don't care to get sawdust everywhere. But now the only thing is that it's pretty rough, so I'm just going to sand it real quick and uh, smooth it out and put a little clear coat on there, so I'll do that next. Alright, one more thing I forgot to mention is I went ahead and drilled two holes on the edge so that I can screw it to a wall, and uh, now I can go ahead and sand it and finish it out. Okay, now that it's sanded, the last thing I'm going to do is put a couple of coats of lacquer on there just to help protect it from stains and give it a nice smooth finish. So I'll probably do two or three coats, let it dry, and then it'll be ready to go inside and get the magnets glued in and ready to use. Alright, so my pallet piece is ready to go, but before I can put the magnets in there and glue them down, I need to actually glue them together so they don't separate. So I'll pull them apart. Add just a little bit of super glue that should hold them together and then make sure they're put together real nice and then I'm going to let them dry and then next I will glue them inside. Okay and now the magnets are all dry so I'm going to add some of this industrial strength uh, craft glue, this E6000. Just put some of that inside there and then drop in my magnets. I'll just do that to all of them, let them dry, and then I'll show you this thing when it's all finished. All right, and check it out. Works great. Now I actually went ahead and just sucked it right up to the uh, side of the refrigerator here, and it's holding strong, so I didn't even have to screw it to the wall using my little holes I drilled. But if I ever wanted to move it, I could, and uh, it would be easy enough to do. And I really like having it on the side of the fridge here because it was a space in our kitchen that we weren't really using at all, and now the knives are really easy to get to, yet they're out of the way, they're not taking up sp uh, space in our drawers anymore, and it works great too, and it looks cool too. We like to have a little bit of color 
with all our you know white and wood in the house and I think it looked really cool now the uh, pallet wood I already had it was a weird size I didn't really know how to use it for furniture but it works great for this if I had a longer piece I had enough magnets left over that I could have done probably two more knives that could have hung on there and I could have built the whole thing in three quarter inch magnets I just used the one inches here um, just to see how strong it would hold this knife and I already bought them so I went ahead and used them but if you remember I had the uh, two rows of three quarter inch magnets over here and I'll show you that it still holds strong as well so I could have done the whole thing in three quarter if I wanted and it only been eight bucks in magnets and then about eight or nine dollars in the drill bit so for about you know with tax a little less than twenty dollars you can make one of these and then uh, it's easy enough that you could pop several out and sell them locally or on Etsy or whatever and it only cost about you know eight dollars in magnets to do and uh, you know they work great and they look cool too so I hope you like this project I think it turned out awesome